Hey guys, Fox Protocol Mining here, coming at you with a new content video. So today I'm going to talk cumulus nodes on the Flux network, what their profitability is looking like, uh, some basic methods of deployability that might be able to help you either reduce costs or just show you the most cost effective ways to do it and let you make a decision on your own there. Uh, I am not going to physically deploy a node today. If you'd like to know how to do that, check my link down below. Uh, there will be a few different links to the official videos that the Flux team has made. They're very detailed, very good videos that can help you get started. But beyond that, guys, I'm just going to jump in with some basic information. Uh, if you are new to Cumulus nodes, you're going to need a thousand Flux in order to deploy one, and you also need to meet their hardware requirement, which is listed here on the main site. It's two cores, four threads, eight gigabytes of RAM. 220 gigabytes of SSD or NVMe storage. And when you create one of these nodes, you're gonna to need to pass a benchmark. The benchmark is gonna require you to have 180 megabits per second of disk write read speed. So you're gonna need the SSD in order to do that. An old school mechanical drive is not gonna meet that requirement. Uh, 240 EPS, which is events per second. So that pertains to the CPUs. They need to be powerful enough to, in, in tandem, meet that 240 EPS minimum requirement. Uh, again, when you benchmark your node, when you first fire it up, it will let you know whether or not your hardware is meeting those requirements. Uh, you also have a bandwidth requirement of 25 megabits down and up. Uh, I know people who have gotten away with less than that, but ideally you want to meet these requirements because if at any time you fail a benchmark while your node is on network, you will be kicked off network until such time that you meet the benchmarks, which could potentially cost you money. So do make sure that when you're deploying something that it does meet these requirements. So what is the profitability looking like for a node? So we come to this as the Flux OS dashboard, which will be linked down below if you want to see this. Uh, this gives you a lot of information about the nodes and other things, but they have a tab called Economics, which breaks everything down for us based on the current flux price uh, and total number of cumulus nodes in circulation, yada, yada, yada. So the cumulus nodes pay out based on a ranking system. So when you first start your node, you're going to start at the very bottom of the totem pole. Nodes will confirm, and as they confirm, you will move up in ranking. When you get to rank 1, you will get a payout. Your payout for a cumulus node is 5.625 flux. Right now, that's give or take every eight days. Uh, I will show you a cool tracker for that though, also. But there's a lot of numbers on this page, so I'm gonna break them down just a little bit further. So you see the 20.09 flux, that is the base reward, so that is that 5.625 flux. And then you have flux tokens. So the flux network pays what's called a parallel asset. So right now there are five of them deployed, and there are five of them undeployed. The five that are deployed are paid out to your node and can be claimed and then converted back into flux. Mm -hmm. There are fees to do that, mm -hmm. so you need to keep that into mind, you, how often you want to convert those rewards back to flux, because the more you do it, the more fees you're going to pay. Uh, the other five rewards, the other five uh, assets that are not released. These nodes do accumulate, but do not pay until they become active, which I believe the pipeline is PAs 6 and 7 will become active sometime later this year. And then those re rewards will still accumulate, and you'll be able to withdraw them when those chains are activated. Now we have what's called VPS cost here, uh, so that would be virtual private server cost. I'm just going to refer to this figure as operational cost, uh, just to make it simple. So that is how much they're expecting people to pay in order to run a node. So that's where we get this 34, 3784 figure from, because what this is essentially saying is after you've earned your flux and your flux tokens and you've paid your, your operational costs, this is what your profitability should be. Now, I am actually using a VPS. And Flux even has a little spreadsheet that keeps track of all the VPSs that they know of. Uh, right now, the cheapest one being 12 euros a month, which if you are United States like me, that's about $14 a month. 
So you've got to keep in mind this figure is not entirely accurate and it will vary based on whether you're hosting from home or if you're using a VPS. So if you increase that to what I'm paying, which is around 14, you're looking at $34 and some change every month on a flex node, which isn't terrible. I mean, it's definitely not what it was, but it's still not terrible, but you need to figure out if that's something that's worthwhile for you. And you need to keep in mind that as more nodes come on network, this figure is going to get lower and lower. So right now we're at 6,100 and we've been, you know, like I said, it hasn't even been 30 days. We only had a thousand nodes less than 30 days ago. Now we're at 6,000. Uh, I see this re realistically going up to the 10,000 mark, most likely, at least short term until profitability works itself out. So how can you deploy these? Now we've VPS is a virtual private service, so you're renting somebody else's computer. What if you want to host one of these from home? What kind of savings can you get? How does that affect profitability? It, that depends. If you have a computer laying around, you can host a flux node on a computer or even an old server. But if you're using a traditional household computer, they're not the most energy efficient devices. Let's say it's pulling 150 watts to remain operational. So, you know, you figure maybe it's got a GPU in there, or a graphics card, uh, a GPU graphics card, same thing, <laughs> CPU, and you know, and just it's idling, it's running the node, it's not doing much else. I'm just going to throw 150 watts out there as a figure, and if you're paying 15 cents a watt, you're looking at almost $17 a month to run that. So it's actually more expensive to run on a computer than it would be to rent a private server. Now that's just a ballpark. I mean, if you're running something that's different, that's great. I'm just using 150 watts, 15 cent per kilowatt hour as a, that's where I got that figure. So don't, don't yell at me. Now, the nice thing about a Cumulus node is, is it has ARM support for the Raspberry Pis. So if you happen to have a Raspberry Pi, you could potentially, it has to be a Raspberry Pi 4 or equivalent with eight gigabytes of RAM. Otherwise it's not gonna do it. Uh, those only pull about 10 watts, maybe 12. So you're only looking at about a dollar or so a month to run one of those, even paying 15 cents a kilowatt hour. So that would theoretically be a much cheaper go-to option. But if you don't already have a Raspberry Pi, then you have to pay to acquire one, and they're about $170 for a kit. It depends on where you go, but from what I've seen, and I don't even have anywhere to link to you that's in stock right now, where you could actually get one, because they're really hard to find right now. But if you could get one, it's $170 for the kit, which gets you your heat sinks, your fan, your case, and then you still need an external hard drive. So you're gonna need a cable to adapt to that, which is about six bucks. And then you've got a $30, 500 gigabyte SSD you still need to get. So you're gonna be shelling out almost 200 plus dollars just to get it off the ground. Whereas with a VPS right now, you're only paying about $167 a year. So going into year two, you'd come out ahead, but and year three and year four. It depends on how long you're looking to do this, I guess. If you're looking for short-term gains, a VPS makes more sense unless you already have the hardware on hand because you're shelling out for hardware. So it's a give and take. There's, you know, there's advantages and disadvantages. And, you know, and if your bandwidth doesn't meet the requirements, then you can't even deploy anyway. So your VPS would be the only option that you have. So there's a lot of factors that go into it. Uh, obviously, I wanna encourage everyone to host from home. Just keep in mind, when you do that, your IP address becomes public. So you're inviting the whole world to know that you just created a flux node at your specific address, because an IP address is about as accurate as your home address. So it can be, if you're not, you value your privacy, that could be a potential issue. Yeah. So, let's summarize this. 
because I feel like I'm rambling a little bit and I am sorry. But if we summarize this down, we're sitting at about, depending on how you're hosting, anywhere from 34 to 47 USD a month on a, on a cumulus node. And all indications are showing me that that amount is going to continue to decrease. When I started mine about, I want to say about three to four weeks, but no, yeah, I did mine shortly after the happening. So I was seeing earnings about 60 USD a month. And obviously we're now down almost to half that. And we're continuing to fall. If we get to the 10,000 node mark, I'm estimating we'll be in the 20 to $25 range of profitability. Uh, that's just an estimate. I haven't done the actual math on that. So those are all things to keep in mind too. So realistically right now, profitability is still changing pretty rapidly because we're so close to the happening. We haven't really leveled out yet. I think we will see some people backpedal because obviously people were hoping for probably a little bit more than what we're getting. I mean, the yields are still good. I mean, you're still over 25% yield. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's great, but, and there's also a whole nother factor to consider. So when you're earning Flux tokens, you have to pay a fee to convert those to Flux. It's only like one Flux to convert, but depending on how often you're converting, that can add up pretty quick. And again, you have to pay another fee because it's one Flux to claim them, and then it's 1.5 Flux plus a tax fee in the currency that the token is native to to convert to flux. So realistically you're paying two and a half flux and a tax fee for every time that you convert back. And a cumulus node because the rewards are split five ways to the PAs means that you're only earning 0.5625 per payout. So you have to wait two payouts to even have enough to claim, let alone swap. So you have like the first, your first five payouts of the year for flux tokens are literally just paying the fees. So that's something to keep in mind too, because that's, you know, with the current payout time taking about eight days, that's, that's kind of rough. So all things to keep in mind. Obviously I have six nodes deployed right now. So I deployed them immediately after the happening, and I'm just kind of letting it ride. So, but you know, if you're only gonna, if you're just thinking about deploying one node, you know, it might not be for you. And if that's the case, that's the case. But there's still money to be made here. I mean, an extra forty dollars a month, give or take, isn't anything to shake a stick at, because passive revenue has a lot of power. Because this, because you know, it's stackable. Anyway, the one last thing I want to touch on, guys, before I ramble myself into Rambleville here, is this nifty little app that was deployed on the Flux Network. So I pulled up one of my nodes to show you this. Uh, it shows how many PAs I have that are possible to be claimed. It's really nice to keep track of that figure because there's nothing in the Zelcor wallet that really shows you someplace easy to see what your PAs are. You can get them, you can see, but you have to dig for it a little bit. Uh, but so this is really nice. All you have to do is plug your uh, your node IP address, not IP address, your node wallet address up here, and the IP, the tier, your current rank, last time it paid, and the estimated time to your next payout will show on here. So I'm at 2,437, so I've got to move that many slots up in order to get a payout on this node. Uh, also keep in mind the shadow assets, so PAs 6 through 10 that are just accumulating are not shown on here because they obviously we don't know what those our chains are going to be yet. They haven't been built yet, but they are still accruing, but there is nowhere that you're going to see where that is, but they will accrue in the exact same amounts that you see on the screen. So PAs uh, 6 through 10, you can just kind of imagine they're down here below this, and they would be the exact same figures. 
and those are rewards that you have accumulated but you haven't earned yet because the chains don't exist. So that's kind of a long-term play on the nodes and it does actually help the profitability because eventually you'll be able to claim those. So if you use the current price basis for the value of those chains, technically you're earning another 50% uh, of your base reward. So 25% of the monthly reward add on to it again and that's what your node is truly earning you just can't claim it yet if that makes sense if it doesn't ask me in the comments below I'll explain it a little better but realistically guys I think I covered just about everything I wanted to get to uh, you know your different ways to deploy you've got your VPS your home computer uh, if you have a server I mean most people don't have servers in their homes if you do, that's an option as well. You can use Hyper-V if you don't know what that is. Google it, Hyper-V in launching a virtual machine on a server is an option. I mean, there's a couple different ways to go about cumulus nodes. Really, this you know it depends on your knowledge level. Uh, if you're new to it, the VPS is going to be the easiest way to deploy it, but you're going to have to shell out money for the VPS. Uh, excuse me. So NetCup, being the example that I've been using, uh, requires a 12-month contract that's paid semi-annually. So that means that the yearly cost is like 167 give or take a little bit. So you're going to be paying in increments of about 80 to 85 bucks. It used to be cheaper, but they, when Flux had the happening, they got swamped with customers and they actually increased the prices because of international demand kind of crappy but I don't really blame them at least they're still letting people set up nodes there there was a whole nother company that happened that yeah Contabo um, that's all I'm gonna say <clears throat> so if you have questions guys please hit me up in the comments down below I think I covered just about everything I wanted to cover uh, all the links and everything that I'm show that I've showed you on here even a few things I didn't Check the description down below. There'll be plenty of links down there for you guys to explore uh, to see maybe, you know, if you want to keep tracking profitability a little bit more before you deploy, then yeah, I, that makes sense to me. Especially if you're using a VPS and you're going to get locked into a 12 month contract, you really need to plan ahead to make sure, you know, flux price can change at any time. It can go down, it can go up, and obviously that's going to have a huge effect on rewards too because the underlying asset price is going to control the profitability. So that's it in a nutshell, guys. I'm sorry this dragged on a little bit long, and I, I did ramble a little bit, and I apologize for that. But this is a lot of information, and I want people to know about these nodes because, you know, they're very easy to deploy. That's a really easy way to make some flux work for you and get a passive revenue stream started. And, I mean, it's increasing the... Uh, resources that the network has to draw from and that's also really bullish for price increases not financial advice i will say that you know i cannot tell you what flux price is going to do i can only tell you what it is doing so that is for you to figure out guys i hope this was informative if it was please like subscribe down below for more content as i get it out and i hope you all have a wonderful day